Hey, what's up? This is Nick Walter from MadeUpByPeople.com and today I'm going to be teaching you a tutorial about adding swipe to delete to your app. Have you seen this before? Like in Apple's mail app, you have a mail you want to get rid of, so you swipe it, little delete button shows up, you tap it, poof, the thing's gone. I'm going to show you how to add that to your app. It's really simple, pretty good stuff, and I'm jazzed up right now. Uh, I just had Taco Bell's new quesalupa. I've got some Baja Blast. I'm just having a great time right now. So before we dive into this, if you've never done app development before, if you don't know what a table view is, this one's too advanced for you. So I have a coupon for you so you can go check out my course, get all up to speed with that. It's uh, madeupbypeople.com slash iOS coupon. Go there, check out uh, my class. We'll give you all the details. It's made for people who are beginning in iOS development. But Assume that you know what you're doing. Let's get started on this tutorial. So let's open up Xcode here and make a new project. Okay, create a new project down there. We want the single view application. We're just going to put a table view inside of this. And I'm just going to call it swipe to delete, baby. Okay, uh, Nick Walter, all looks good. And we'll hit next. Make sure if this tutorial is in Swift, so if you don't have Swift selected here, please make sure that it's Swift. Always got to check that. Uh, I'm just going to throw mine on my desktop. And then with that, anytime I start a new project, I always hit the play button just to make sure it runs and we don't have any issues or anything. So we'll just make sure that our app pops up like we would expect it to. Come on, where's this simulator at? And... Show up the time and I'll feel satisfied. Oh, there it was. It's just really big. Hey, if your simulator window is ever really big, select the simulator, go to window, scale, and you can uh, turn it down to something even smaller. There we go. Now it's fitting. All right. Uh, with that, so what we want to do is I just want to show a list of stuff inside of this table view. Uh, if you know me, I love using dogs as an example whenever I'm teaching something. I don't know what it is. So we're just going to have a list of dog names, and if you swipe, you can delete it and remove it from the list. I know, very simple, but let's go ahead and first add the table view here. So we're gonna go to the storyboard, all right. And uh, I'm gonna zoom out here, I just pinched on my trackpad. And I'm gonna search for the table view over here. Good, I'll click and drag that out. I've gotta be zoomed in here to put that in there, so put that in. Then I want this thing to fill up the screen, so if I go and click the constraints here, I'm gonna just do zero for all of these, meaning it should touch the edge on each. And make sure you uncheck this constraint to margins uh, or else it will not go all the way to the edge. Cool, so you got all that. These things are full red. We have those constraints. Let's hit this triangle here and do update frames. Ah, it's looking good, filling up the whole screen. Okay, so we got that going. Let's connect this table view into the code. And hopefully this feels pretty familiar with you. You've you know done table views before. You're like, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. So we're, we'll connect it to our uh, view controller code. I'm going to call this table view just table view, nice and boring like that. We'll go back to full screen. We'll head over to our view controller file, and uh, we'll delete the did receive memory warning. No one likes that function. It's a dumb function. No one ever uses it, so we're getting rid of it. All right, inside the view to load, we gotta set the table views data source and delegate equal to self. Self dot table view is come on. Xcode just can't keep up here. Because apparently we're doing something really complex. We're really not. Come on, beach ball. You're killing me here. <gasps> there we go. All right. We want the delegate equal to self. Then of course we got to come up here and say that yes, this view controller is a UI table view data source and UI table view delegate. Excellent. Then whenever you are the data source and the delegate, you have to answer two questions. One is when I start typing table, you'll see all these cool functions here. We want number of rows and sections. And we want to know what goes inside of each cell. So if you start typing table, look for cell for row at index path. Cool. So we have this. Uh, before we put any info here, remember we're listing dog names. So let's go ahead and make an array that's just an array of dog names. Let's say var my dogs. 
is equal to, we don't even need my there, let's just have it be dogs. Okay, dogs is equal to an array, and let's go and put some dog names in there. So let's put Snoop as one, let's do Sarah as another, uh, uh, Fido is a classic, you can't, you can't list dog names without Fido. Let's maybe do Mark, and one more, Jill. Boom, okay, so we got some dog names, uh, looks good. Now, inside of this function here, for a number of rows, we'll just say, hey, we're going to return self.dogs.count. So however many dogs are in the array, that's good. And this is important because when we're deleting stuff, we're gonna be editing what this array is, and so we always wanna say that you know we're returning based on what's inside of that array. Down here for this, uh, it wants a cell to be returned eventually, so I'm gonna say let cell be equal to an, a new UI table view cell. And we'll return that cell. And then in between creating and returning, let's set the text label in there to the name of the dog. So we're gonna say cell.textlabel.text is equal to self.dogs. And then we want to get the one at index path dot row. Because that's the current like cell that they're at, right? That's what this index path dot row means. And I think we need to add an exclamation point here. Yeah. Okay. So that's all set. Uh, let's run our app and make sure that it's working just like we want it to. Build runs. Here it pops up and we oh look, Snoop, Sarah, Fido, Mark, Jill, perfect. Okay. And they all look cool, we can select them, but that's it. And you'll notice we try and do the swipe here, we can't do anything, right? But that's what we're going to change. So up to this point, hopefully you know exactly what I've done. You're like, duh, I know how to make a table view, Nick. It's not that hard. This is how you add deleting. This is where things get fun. So come down here again, we're gonna type, oh, looks like I'm running out of space. We're gonna type uh, table view, and we wanna get this commit editing style, okay? This is the function that when uh, someone swipes on it, that delete appears, it's gonna call this function. And essentially there's a couple different things that could happen. There could be a delete or an edit, but we're just working with delete here. So you can see it gives us this thing called an editing style. So we wanna check and see if it was the delete one that they wanted. So we're gonna say if editing style is double equal signs, because when we're doing if statements, that's how we say check to see if it's equal, and then do dot, and then Xcode will automatically show up the different options. Insert, none, delete. We want delete. So we say if they want to delete, then run the following code. So for now, I'm just gonna say print sub dog. Okay, smells like up dog. What's up dog? Old joke from grade school, but okay, let's run this and see how the app's any different now. So we hit run, app shows up on, I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm sick of Mark, I'm gonna get rid of Mark. We swipe, hey, there's a delete button, and if I tap on that delete button, we see sup dog shows up. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, at least we know that this line of code's being run, and now we can do that swipe thing here, right? This whole thing shows up. And then you're saying, okay, well, how do we actually get rid of the dog that they want to get rid of? Well, ours is just an array of strings, right? So we just need to know which cell it is that they're interacting with, and we'll remove that one from the array here. So it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is say self.dogs, that's the array of dogs up here, right? Dot remove, and look, there's this remove at index. And... Uh, remember, we based everything on our table off the index of these things in the array, so we just say remove the one that's at index path dot row. Just like we got the info for the name here, that's the same way that we're deleting it. So this line of code will delete the dog from the array, but watch what happens if we just do this. So we hit run, okay, it shows up, is our dogs, and I swipe, I'm like, I'm gonna delete Mark, okay, and then it's like, I'm gonna delete Snoop. Oops, lost my uh, thing here. I'm gonna delete this. You'll notice that the table isn't updating and it's like, well, what the, what the heck's going on? And if we keep doing this forever, we're gonna get an error. And you're like, what's going on? Well, once you edit this array up here, yes, that made the change, but the table view was never told like, hey, you know, the array went and changed. You gotta go update stuff. So there's only one line we gotta add here and that's um, 
get rid of this. Self dot table view dot can't see with this dumb end error here. Let me stop that. Self dot table view dot reload data. That says, hey, table view, we've got new info, and it will go and call this number of rows again. It will call the self row at index path. It kind of just does a refresh of everything inside the table view. So now that we have that added, let's run our app. And we'll see here, Sarah, I swipe delete. Boom, Sarah's gone. I do the same thing with Fido. Boom, Fido's gone. Hey, Jill, guess what? Pff, you're out. Just like that, we can move all the way through. I wanna make a special note if you're using core data, it's just something you gotta be aware of that's a little bit different from the example that I gave you. So if you're using core data, probably what you're doing is somewhere inside of view did load or somewhere you're going and fetching from core data all your dog objects or whatever it is you have in core data and you're putting them into an array up here that's like a property inside the view controller. So assuming that you're doing that, when the user goes to delete something, you don't just want to take that object out of the array and then you know say, oh, reload data, just like that. Because the problem is if someone deletes something and it's in core data, they expect it to be gone like permanently, like it's no longer there. And if you just delete it from the array, you haven't actually deleted it from core data. So the next time the user opens the app, your app will go get all the things out of core data and the object that the user deleted is still in there. It really hasn't been deleted. It's just been deleted out of this kind of temporary holding array. So the path that you would want to take is delete the object from core data and then run whatever function it is you, that you did to go get all the objects out of core data and then update this array. So in fact, if you're using core data, you should never directly remove something from the array. Instead, your approach should be, let's delete this object from core data and then let's go execute a fetch request again, get everything out of core data, and then let's reload the table view based off the new stuff that we have. So special note for people that are working with core data. And that's it. That is uh, everything you need to add the swipe to delete. It's really pretty simple. And I've shown you how to use it when you have uh, a table view inside of a view controller, right? It's not actually a table view controller. There's a little bit of different technique with that, but. Uh, Again, hopefully this was helpful to you. I love how simple Apple has made it, right? This one function gives us everything we need to go do that. And uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know down in the comments. And again, if this was too much for you, please check out madeupbypeople.com slash iOS coupon, and I'll get you into my class at a great discount. Have a great day, and uh, I'm going to go have some more of my Baja.